Hello and welcome to Inside EVs and welcome to the brand new Mercedes-Benz EQS. That's right, I'm in a secret location with the EQS and I'm gonna take you on a full tour of it. We already have plenty of videos going through all of the specs and trims of EQS, but in the US, you're gonna be able to choose two main versions. The first is going to be the long range king. It's gonna be called the EQS 450 plus. The plus stands for extended range. After that, you can bump up to the EQS 580, which is gonna have way more power, all wheel drive uh, and standard hyperscreen. We're gonna get into that. But for, but for now, let's take a look at this edition one EQS, which is a commemorative edition for the first year of production. And we're going on a full tour. This one's specced out with everything, of course. So up front, the EQS really has a nice face to it. It's a pleasant look. You know, this is the first time I'm seeing the car in person as well. And uh, judging from the camo photos, I wasn't too optimistic, but here in person, I think it totally changed my opinion. It's an absolutely gorgeous car, very friendly face, not as serious as Mercedes has been over time. And I think that's important uh, here. This one has, of course, a star pattern trim in the front grille, uh, sort of like a Mercedes logo, but just without the circular element. You have three uh, daytime running light dots that are connected together with this uh, really nice light signature that carries around the entire front of the vehicle. Again, I think it's a very pleasant face, very happy face. And this one uh, painted in twilight blue is a really good combination. Of course, if you take a look on the interior here, just as a little taste before we go inside, peek through the windows, you can see a really nice gray seat combination with a very light blue dashboard. I think it's a really pleasant looking car. Now, uh, we've seen the front of it, and this is the most important part of the car is the side, because this has something called the one bow design. Essentially, this is the new design language for Mercedes EQ. It's a singular piece, a singular curve running from the front and ending in this fastback design here in the rear. Really neat feature uh, with this one bow design, uh, sort of a, a, si a byproduct of it, is the lowest coefficient of drag of any series production vehicle ever in history. So this giant over five and a half meter long vehicle has a 0 0.20 coefficient of drag, which is truly insane. Let's come around to the back. You have this awesome uh, helix uh, design here inside the taillights, absolutely beautiful sculpting in the lights. Mercedes has always done lighting correctly and here is no exception. This is gonna be the part that you all want to see, of course. It's not a regular sedan, it's a hatchback, folks. So I can put my three big dogs in here. You can load this up with a surfboard. You can put anything you want. A Little bit of underfloor storage as well. Take a look down here. You can put your charging cables, et cetera. No front trunk in the EQS. So this is where your charging cables are gonna go. And honestly, I think that's totally fine. You've heard me say it for ID4, for other vehicles. I think front trunks are silly. I never use them. I own plenty of cars with them. You don't need it. Anyway, take a look back here. You have uh, switches that can fold the seats down right here. You hit that, it unlatches the second row and then it will fold completely flat. Really awesome, great usable space. Of course, power trunk close and open. Now, join me over here on this side because this is where we get into charging and all the good stuff. You know, of course, I love charging. The charging port is located on the rear passenger side of the vehicle. It can do 9.6 kilowatts on AC. Car is locked. Let me unlock it really quick. And then you can go up to 200 kilowatts uh, continuous on DC. And more importantly than the peak of DC charging, you're going to be able to hold this, at least according to initial reports and conversations with engineers, from about zero, maybe a little bit above zero, all the way to 80%. It's gonna be a really flat charging curve, which is absolutely fantastic. And uh, to me, that's more important than a really high spicy peak speed number that'll only be held for a few minutes. This is just gonna rock it through. Now, to sustain that 200 kilowatt charging, you need a really sophisticated thermal management system. So this has uh, plate cooling in the battery pack. It has thermal channels for the coolant to run in and out of the pack from the, uh, 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 radiators up front, which is super neat. So it just uses a glycol system like any other EV, of course. And let's come back around this way because there's one last feature I wanna show you that I think is really neat on the outside. And it's actually on the driver's side of the vehicle. Now, of course, electric cars really don't need much maintenance. The only maintenance item that you need is washer fluid, really. Tires, of course, they're heavy, tons of torque, but take a look at this. 
there's a little very convenient compartment right here in front of the driver's door that you just push in right here and you can actually fill up your washer fluid through this little compartment. I've never seen an implementation like this uh, for the one serviceable item on your vehicle, but I think it's kind of neat and I love that it's there. It's a neat story to this little cutout. Let's talk about getting in and out of the EQS. Well, there's two different ways to do it. You can open the door yourself, of course, or there's a really neat thing. You just swipe here on this door handle and then you can give this a little nudge and the door will actually automatically open. Now that's pretty neat, but even neater than that is if you have the key fob on you, which is a beautiful key fob with rose gold accents on it for the 580 version, of course, really, really nice key fob. Um, it will just automatically open as you approach the vehicle, which I think is super neat. When you get inside, you can just pull on the door a little bit and then it will close itself all the way in. And it even does a nice little soft close there at the end. So let's explore the interior because that's really what matters on this car. The EQS, of course, is the top trim of electric cars from Mercedes-Benz and it needs to live up to that inside. So let's see how nice it is in there. Inside the EQS, all you need to do is touch the brake pedal and the door will automatically come and close. A really neat feature for sure. A huge emphasis has been put on NVH of the vehicle, so it's super duper quiet inside. You have optional double, pay, double pane glazing. The 0.20 coefficient of drag leads to a slipperier car, which leads to a quieter car. There's acoustic partitions in the rear lift gate to reduce the boominess over bumps. The list goes on and on and on, but I can tell you seriously, sitting in here, it's dead silent, super nice. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the most striking feature of the EQS, which is this hyper screen. It's 56 inches across. It's made up of three individual screens. It's not necessarily just one piece of screen. You have a 12.7 inch, 12.3 inch display here, 17.7 inch display here in the middle, and then another 12.3 inch display over here. And uh, you know, th these two are OLED, this one's LCD. These are dry bonded to the glass. This one's wet bonded to the glass. You have haptic feedback and force feedback. So when I touch something, it buzzes my hand and I know that I've made the selection. There's 12 vibration motors behind this screen. Truly insane screen technology here. Something we've never seen in a vehicle before. The silicate, uh, the, the glass basically that's used here is a blend of a uh, whole bunch of different materials that makes it uh, fingerprint resistance scratch resistant and it was formed get this fun fact for you funny qs fact this screen was formed at 1202 degrees fahrenheit how german is that imagine that 1201 no 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 gotta be 1202 you get this gorgeous rose gold uh, uh theme that comes around the whole cabin here and that denotes the eq the rose gold is uh, really reminiscent of the copper inside of an electric motor and here on the key for the edition one i mentioned it was for the 580 but it's actually for the edition one, it's rose gold as well, hearkening back again to that uh, electric motor windings. Now this key is super heavy as you would expect from an S-Class, really weighty key, beautiful design of course. This is how you do a key properly, I think. I'm just going to set it down right here. Let's turn the car on. All you have to do is swipe on the door and then it opens. And that's really neat. And then you can just swipe back and then it'll close all by itself. We have a couple different menus and things to go into. So there's two different basic modes of operation for this hyper screen, this main screen here. The first is this general MBUX uh, looking display. And this is something we've seen on E-Class and S-Class that we've tested on Motor1.com as well as uh, on out of spec reviews. You know, this is all pretty standard Mercedes. However, there's an entirely new operating method called, um, trying to think about what it's called actually. I don't know, it doesn't matter, but it's a zero layer. That's the word. All you need to do is you push in this home button and it switches instantly to this zero layer approach. But here, of course, you have the screen in 3D in 2D and north up, you can zoom in and out. Uh, pretty good response actually for being so large. I gotta say that's, that's pretty snappy. Overall, I've been playing through the menus here and I think there's very little lag that I've been able to experience. And again, this is pre-production car, pre-production software. But this zero layer approach is quite interesting because right now yeah, there's not many menus up, but it, I don't need a lot of menus up, right? So it's going to learn how you use your car and then over time, it will 
basically project onto the screen certain things. For example, if you're pulling up to a charging station, you can get to your charging menu and things like this. Now, speaking of the charging menu, that's up here in the top left is this EQ thing. And uh, excuse me, this is where you can get to all of your, uh, your range and, and charging stations and things like this. This one doesn't have all of the um, uh, 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 DC fast charging information that would come with a connected car. This is a German spec vehicle, so it doesn't have everything. But this is an important menu. You can access it here or with a specific EQ menu. There's two different DC fast charging levels, basically. There's an eco charge that uh, will limit the max current of the vehicle. Looks like it's down to 100 kilowatts. The car we're in is not a US spec car. This one actually has the small battery pack, the 90 kilowatt hour. That's not coming to the US, so I don't know on the 100 and seven uh, kilowatt hour battery pack usable that we're gonna be getting here in the US. I don't know what this eco charge uh, limit will be. Maybe it's 100 kilowatts as well. If I turn this off, then you get maximum uh, DC fast charging, of course. I think that's a great feature. You also can set the maximum charge limit of the vehicle all the way down from 50 to 100% in 10% increments, which is really great. Love that for sure. Um, this zero layer approach is pretty nice, but personally, you know, you get this menu stuff for me, it's probably not the mode I would use. I would use the more traditional uh, MBUX screen where you have all of your different menus and settings and things. And let's go through what some of these are. I mean, there we could spend three hours going through the 10 different seat massagers and the, the sound settings for this uh, 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 Burmester sound system. 15 speaker, 750 watt system, by the way. Burmester is one of the leading uh, audio uh, suppliers in the industry. Really great system, so I'm excited to hear this. I know the big focus was put on making sure it sounded as an S-Class should, but you can go through. You have your nav, phone, radio, media, of course. You have a whole bunch of different apps here, which is sort of like your connected services. None of them will work on this particular car just because it's not connected. Again, German spec vehicle flown over here to the US. In the comfort uh, setting, I can choose my different massages. I think I'll go for an activating massage and I'll put it on intensive. So now I have the seat pushing little things into my back. It's actually super comfortable. Uh, within this, you can adjust your seat, a uh, whole bunch of stuff. You can have it heat more on the bottom than the back. Really neat. And then you get to your ambient lighting settings, which I think is one of the neatest things about this car. You have this beautiful strip of light that runs all the way throughout the vehicle. If you have the sport seats specifically, you get a strip of light that go around the seats. You have uh, on the speaker grills, as well as your seating controls, this sort of hovering approach with lighting around it. At nighttime, this car is absolutely beautiful. Take a look at this backlit approach here. And so you can change all this to different colors, to whatever you want, green. I think the one that they had it selected on was really nice, actually, this sort of bluish purple type theme. I really love that. And then you get into something called energizing comfort, which are pre-programmed lighting, seat, temperature, uh, and massage functions that are supposed to make you feel certain ways. Now, to me, I kind of laugh at these things. I think they're really funny. But if you truly live with the vehicle for a long time, this can make a big difference. So let's go over here to the vitality setting. It's a revitalizing effect provided by stimulating light and a few other things. So let's click on this and here we go. It's playing music now. I have, <laughs> it really is playing music. My seat's doing a whole bunch of stuff. We get this wave of light coming around the cabin. It's really, really kind of wild actually. There's a bunch of other functions as well that can be selected. You can turn off traction control, which is a lot of EVs can't do this. And that's actually a big deal. I'm so happy that you can. Not that you want to go out and drift your S-Class, but uh, there are certain driving situations in which that you do want some wheel spin. So I'm so happy that uh, Mercedes decided to include a way to have a little bit of spicy fun in the S-Class. Again, mostly for uh, uh, in inclement weather situations. They also have a snow chain mode similar to uh, the combustion vehicles you can put on snow chains and there's a special mode and this is mainly for the rear steering which this car has two different options of rear steering the first is a four and a half degree rear steering that's standard so you'll get four and a half degrees of rear angle then you can opt for a 10 degree rear angle steering uh, which matches hummer ev by the way and uh, really super neat uh, I, I love cars with rear steering it gives a long wheelbase vehicle a magical short wheelbase around town it's it's quite interesting i think you get the comfort door settings you can uh, lower the rear headrest just like every other mercedes and you get so much that you can go into eventually when we get to spend more time with this vehicle we're going to go super in depth in this system and play around with it you'll notice this vehicle also 
has a passenger display over here and it will only activate when there's a passenger in the seat. Now, if they happen to be watching a movie or doing something that I shouldn't be doing when I'm driving, there's cameras monitoring my face. And when I look over there, it's gonna dim that screen so I can't see it as the driver. That's kind of neat. Certainly don't like to be locked down, but I do like the, uh, the, the attention to detail there for sure. Uh, just in terms of, of suspension, drivetrain, overall uh, driving dynamics, these are all things that we're going to have to see going down the road. But I can tell you the sense of build quality in this vehicle from a battery pack architecture, again, 107.8 kilowatt hours available, uh, of usable capacity, about 113 installed. Everything here feels super well done, really nicely integrated, and they kind of aren't missing anything from the technical side of things. And certainly, as expected, there's nothing missing from the interior quality and features. We knew this was going to be good. Um, let's talk about driver assistance. This is all controlled on the steering wheel on the left-hand side. You have adaptive cruise control, of course, lane centering. It will make lane changes for you. Very similar system to their combustion vehicles. Um, and, and it's a great system. You have paddle shifters on the back of the wheel that control your different number, different levels of regen. It can go up to 0.5 G of off-throttle deceleration all the way down to a stop. 0.31 G of that is of uh, regen. It'll do 290 kilowatt regen when you blend it with the brake pedal, which is truly incredible. Now that's gonna be on the EQS 580 with two motors, of course. Uh, I think the single motor 450 plus, the range spec is gonna be traction limited on that rear axle to get as much regen as possible. But seriously, a ton, a ton of regen, of course. Uh, now I could go on all day about the technical stuff. However, there are some really neat little things that I think will truly make a difference in your everyday life. And part of this comes down to air quality. This whole screen here monitors the exterior air quality and the interior air quality and uses a HEPA filtration with three different filters, some of which are carbon activated, a, a smaller mesh type filter, and then a larger filter that catches like leaves to filter out the air to better than hospital clean room uh, uh, levels of, of particles. Now, you can see here the exterior is 3 p.m. 2.5, I don't know what any of this stuff is. It just sounds like it's gonna be really clean in here, to be honest. You also have different fragrances that you can choose in the vehicle. There's a specialty fragrance created for the EQS called Number Six Mood. It's supposed to give you the scent of a fig tree, a tall fig tree with a cool breeze blowing around it, essentially. Uh, we'll see what that sounds like. Six USB-C ports throughout the vehicle, each of which are 100 watt continuous capable, so you could charge your MacBook Pro off of it, uh, which is truly incredible, really love that. Heated and cooled seats, of course, all controlled here on the left or right hand side, three memory positions each. You can also store user profiles in the hyper screen here, the MBUX, and each user profile can be activated through a fingerprint sensor here. Um, you know, it says, you know, uh, it's not set up for this vehicle, of course. You can set it up by voice, a pin, or you can even set it up to your key. So lots of ways for the vehicle to know who's driving. Now, if I am the driver and I have a um, profile set up, but I wanted to let someone else drive, I can then create a profile for them and then log into my own profile in the back seat or the passenger seat and have all of my same settings there in that seat, which is so neat. And I love all the over-engineering, all of these little things no one else can do, honestly, but Mercedes uh, or some of the German luxury brands, because they've just spent years honing all of these different methods of user integration into their vehicles. Others are going to be able to get the electric uh, uh, drivetrain systems right and charging systems right. I think Mercedes has done a really good job here, to be honest. But I think you're also going to find things that Mercedes can do that no one else can, uh, as mentioned. Just a little hint of that is some of these energizing comfort modes and things like this. Here's a good example of this. This car has a nap mode. And I'm not exactly sure how it works or where it is. I'll have to play around to find it. But let's go over to comfort. Let's see if we can find it. Energizing comfort, well-being, power nap. Here we go. That wasn't hard to find. I'm gonna hit play, and it says uh, only voltage system supplied on. So I think I need to turn the car off. Let's see if we can go back to it. Comfort, power nap, play. You can see it's closing all of the air, the uh, vents in the vehicle. My seat is going all the way back, and look, it's playing. It's, it has a starry night on the hyper screen here. So now I'm in a position ready to fall asleep. It's <laughs> This is so crazy. And it's going to take me through three stages of sleep. It's blowing 
different types of air on my face. It's going to get me to fall asleep. It's going to hold me asleep for a predetermined amount of time that I imagine you can reset. And then when it goes to wake me up, it's going to give me a gentle massage with a little bit of a cold air on the seat, a little bit of air conditioning on the seat, and really just get to the point to get me up so I'm vitalized. And this is called power nap. Just one of the 9,000 features in this car that again, no one else is going to be able to do. Really love that. I guess, oh yeah, here we go. It's 20, so it's a 30 minute power nap. That's exactly how long it is. 29, second, uh, 29 minutes and four seconds left here. So let's go home, comfort, and we'll stop power nap. I don't know how to do this. Back button, pause. Here we go. Yeah, just so cool. Puts the music back on. Really gives you this sense of noise cancellation. Very comfortable seating position. And uh, honestly, you pull up to a charger dead, take a power nap in the middle of the night, and you're ready to rock and roll again. I also have really nice pillows on the back here. The seats are unbelievably comfortable. This particular car has the comfort seats, which I really love. You can also option a more sporty seat called the sport seat, naturally. And um, yeah, just a comfortable car. Look, we could go on all day about all the little features and we'll do that when we can spend more time. But here's what you need to know. This is what it boils down to inside. This is S-class levels of comfort, S-class levels of quality in a really well thought out electric vehicle that has almost no compromises. Let's try out the back seat. Let's jump into the back seat of the EQS and wow, you are greeted with miles and miles of legroom. Pretty impressive. Again, I can just pull the door and it closes automatically, which is really great. Now this particular car is fitted with the executive rear seats, which means I can recline them forward and back. They're heated and cooled. This one has the little tablet, which is really great. So I can control some of the car's functions with this tablet. I also have individual screens back here uh, that are basically little MBUX screens that control the rest of the car. Uh, climate control, uh, dual zone back here as well with your own individual vents here, as well as here in the B pillar, which is absolutely awesome. There's a little bit of a storage compartment, very small, but it's a wireless phone charger underneath this cubby. You also get this gorgeous uh, little light signature here in the middle that's going to be backlit and underscored. One thing that I think is really neat is all the interior ambient lighting is sort of this incandescent like uh, uh, yellowish classy color. It's not like these new bright blue LEDs that everyone's using. And this is, this is nice. It's much easier on the eyes, I think, especially at nighttime. Uh, neat feature here is the, uh, the, the seatbelt buckles are actually lit so you can see exactly where you're sliding into. And if you're unbuckled, they'll light up red and start blinking. Really neat little touches. Again, the back seat is everything you would expect from a non Maybach S-Class, basically just super comfortable, plenty of leg room. And the driver's seat is where I was sitting. I'm six foot one. I could fit back there. Uh, totally fine. Headroom's pretty good as well. Uh, totally could use these as chauffeur driven vehicles. You know, if you live in, in certain markets that, that really like a backseat driver or you have like a taxi cab service or something like this, one of these livery services, don't, don't hesitate to get an EQS. Plenty of room back here for sure. And that is your quick tour of the Mercedes EQS. Again, we have so much more information on this car. I'll leave links in the description. But in this video, I really wanted you to get the impression of the quality of the EQS. Spending time with this vehicle, you lose nothing over everything that we've known and loved from S-Class over the years. And you gain so much in terms of a world-class electrification system underneath this body. Uh, it's really the best of both worlds. You have a really leading, class leading electrification system. Great 290 kilowatt regen, really good charging curve, great navigation route planning, paired with everything that we've loved from S-Class for the last 30, 40 years plus, which is a super plush interior, really high quality, uh, pushing the limits with display sizes, of course, with the hyper screen. It's kind of an interesting car and almost in a class of its own. So I encourage you to spend more time reading and learning about this EQS. Hopefully this, open, this has opened your eyes to what could be the best electric car on sale and maybe just the best car in the world.